Hello everyone, I am Miss J. Welcome to another Minecraft video. And welcome back to the Redstone School. Today we're going to be going over a flower farm. Now this flower farm is not where you grow all kinds of flowers. It's where you can grow one flower many, many times. So you can see here that I have this blue orchid. And once I turn this machine on, what's going to happen is we're going to grow tons and tons of blue orchids. Now this works super duper fast, it gets you tons and tons, I mean you get basically stacks, you get pretty much a stack every 5 seconds roughly, and yeah you can see it's just growing like crazy. And then the nice thing about this is I can come over, I can open this trap door, replace that flower right there, and now I'm going to be growing that new kind of flower. So rather than growing all kinds of random flowers that you don't need, getting all kinds of seeds that you don't want, you can just grow the specific flower that you need and get tons of it. Down in the description below there should be a list of all the build materials that you need in order to make this wonderful machine and there should also be a link to the texture pack that I use for my redstone as that is a question I get asked quite frequently. Although I did design this tutorial on the Bedrock Edition, it should work for literally every version of Minecraft since it doesn't use any features that are unique to either. Okay, so let's get in how to build this thing. I'm going to build it a little bit above the ground because it's going to be easier to teach you guys. You can build it in the ground, just understand that you're going to have to do a little bit of digging if you do it that way. So what I'm going to do is pick one of the corners. I'm going to come up by two. I'm going to put my grass block there. That's where my flower is probably going to end up going. And then go ahead and extend that out so that it's five blocks total. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to go five total in the other direction as well. One, two, three, four, and five. So then we are eventually going to fill this entire thing in, but we're not quite ready to do that yet. So then let's go ahead and make our line across the five with whatever block you choose to use. And we're going to line that completely with dispensers. Make sure they are dispensers and not droppers and make sure they're facing into your grass just like mine are right here. Then you're going to come and you're going to hold crouch and you're going to place observers so that they are looking at each one of those dispensers. Then you're going to do another row of observers looking at those original observers. Now what you're going to do is you're going to come down from below and you're going to place dispensers so that they are facing downward on each of those another row of observers watching those and then one last row of dispensers facing down so basically what this is doing for us is if our flower is right here we are going to simultaneously power all of these dispensers on the bottom row on this far row at one time the observers are going to watch for them to power and they're going to trigger these observers will see these trigger and they will trigger this row of dispensers these observers will see these trigger and then we'll turn on this row of dispensers so then we're going to pulse these guys really fast eight times and then basically what it's going to do is chain to where every single dispenser we have out chains now the way it works with the flowers is that with my flower right here, this guy is going to get bone mealed by this dispenser and it's going to spread hopefully to here and possibly to here as well. But either way, whether it spreads here, here, or even into this block right here, we have more dispensers that are going to then bone meal that. And because we are going from a left to right motion, right, because of the way the observers are watching, it is ideal for growing the flowers super rapid. This one bone meals, the flower spreads, and then by the time that it spreads, this one is bone mealing the new flower and spreading it further, and so on out to the edge. So we're at the point where you can go ahead and fill in the rest of your grass. You should have five by five, one, two, three, four, and five one two three four and five so i've selected this block to be my flower block that is where i will place the flower that i want to have being replicated so i'm going to come to the opposite corner of that and then i'm going to go ahead and put down a block on the corner and it doesn't matter which corner you do it on actually uh, it's a little bit easier i think if you do it on the corner towards your dispensers but it doesn't have to be 
So then go ahead and place a dispenser on top of that block and that's going to be the one that's going to hold your water. I wouldn't recommend putting water inside of it yet because we'll do that as the last step. So then underneath that dispenser, you're going to put an observer and it's actually going to be facing the other way. So you may need to break your dispenser in order to get it to where the observer is facing. It's looking downwards like mine is right here. And then what you're going to do is we're gonna build up an etho hopper clock underneath that. In order to do that, go ahead and place your sticky piston right underneath that observer and then place a redstone block on top of that. You're going to come over by, let's go ahead and build out these blocks right here. So skip one block and then place your second sticky piston facing in just like that. I'll give you a little bit of perspective there. Grab your hopper, go ahead and place them facing into each other in between the two sticky pistons, just like this. A comparator on each side of the hopper facing away. And then your comparators need to go into a block and then you need to have one spot of redstone dust on top of the blocks. If you're not familiar on how an etho clock works, basically what we're gonna do is pass items back and forth between these two hoppers, pushing the redstone block back and forth. Every time this piston activates, it's going to trigger our water. So we're not gonna put any items into this hopper yet, but once we do, it's gonna be seven random items. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as they are seven items that stack on each other. So don't do anything like swords or shovels or anything like that. Now come on over to the back of your row of dispensers right here and then what you're going to do is you're going to create another row right below them just like this and you're going to put redstone dust across the full line and then what you're going to do is you're going to place torches underneath each one of those and it's going to make a whole lot of noise. So you can see that we're activating each and every single one of the dispensers. If you want to test them all, you can. I have a redstone texture pack that allows me to see what's actually going on here. And if you're interested in this, I will try to remember to put a link to it down in the description. All right, so let's turn the noise maker off and we're gonna do that by adding an additional block here and a lever there and wonderful, that's so much better. Then another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a block that has a one space gap underneath my lever, another one next to it, and then I'm just gonna tie that redstone up to my etho hopper clock. This way, what happens is when I turn my machine off, it not only turns up here off, but it also turns off my etho hopper clock as well. So with the hopper clock turned off, let's put our seven items inside of it. You can see that mine went ahead and filtered over to the side that had the redstone block. That's what it's supposed to do. And then what I'm going to do is come around to this side. I'm going to add in my edge blocks all the way around. We'll throw in some glass going around just because I like to watch how things work and make sure that everything is going smoothly. Make sure that you add some kind of block on this open space up here because otherwise your flowers will wash out on top of here and obviously that's not good. We don't want that to happen. Once it's all closed off, you can go ahead and throw your bucket of water into the dispenser that's over here all by its lonely self. Then let's go ahead and build up our collection system. So go ahead and find the block that your flower is under. For me, it is this dirt block right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hopper so that there's a one space gap between my dirt block that the flower is on and my hopper. Underneath that hopper, I'm gonna go ahead and put a double chest. On top of the hopper, I'm gonna hold crouch and I'm gonna put a rail and then I'm gonna put a hopper minecart just like so. Now, if you take a step back and you're super careful, you can actually find the hitbox of that rail and you can break it if you want to. That'll make it so your rail's not gonna roll around if you accidentally bump it. It's not necessary, it's just something that I prefer to do. So now all the flowers will get pushed over into this corner. The hopper minecart will suck them up, feed them through the hopper and down into the chest. And now I think the last thing we need to do is add in our bone meal. So in regards to the bone meal, what you can do is you can have hoppers on top of each and every one of the dispensers, just like so. Hold crouch and then place them against. And then over here, you can place them into the sides like this. And then you can just add your chest along like that, 
Note that the one on the end is always going to have its own singular chest because of the way that we have it. And now we add in all the bone meal. So I'm just going to add in a bit to each of the chests. You can obviously fill it up as much as you want. You just want to make sure that you have enough in each individual dispenser to be able to feed your flowers. Now, in regards to the amount of bone meal that you're going to be using, don't worry about the water being on and your dispensers ticking or the dispensers ticking when there's no flour there because it will not actually use bone meal if there's nothing to bone meal. So if I put a button on this dispenser right here and then power it, you can see that we, we didn't use any bone meal, right? It, it's not actually doing anything. To our, to our bone meal count because there's nothing there to bone meal. So it's trying it, but it's not actually doing anything. So now when we flip the lever, it's going to turn on all of our dispensers. They're gonna start bone mealing, bone meal up the flowers. And then every so often, it's going to power the water, wash everything down into the corner and collect it up. So let's see how it goes. And there we go. You can see we instantaneously get tons of flowers the moment the water is gone. It fills it up almost entirely every single time. Don't worry about it if your flowers aren't exactly making it all the way to the end in every flush like you can see here. A couple of them are sitting there. In the next time, it's going to push those down. So you can see these guys, they're just sitting here. But in the next flush, it's going to push them right in. So I played with it a lot and figured out that seven items in the Etho Hopper Clock was just right for being able to get a good flush and a good spread on the flowers, but you can change it if you do want to. I just think that that served the best. If we check our chest, you can see we've already got two stacks flushing in and this thing has only been on for about 10 seconds. So yeah, tons and tons of flowers. And then of course, when you're ready to turn it off and walk away, all you gotta do is flip the switch. Everything's gonna stop and there you go. So one thing I forgot is that the place where your flower goes, you're gonna probably wanna put down a trap door so you can just open it up, change out the flower and then turn your machine back on in order to get different kinds of flowers and collect up all kinds of different types. So that is it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope that you liked it, and I hope that it helps you out. If it did, make sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, I'd love to have you subscribe. That's it for today's video, though. I'm Animus J, and I'll see you next time.